welcome to the Retro Blood. Welcome back, everybody, to the Retro Blood as we continue this New York sleazy slaughter month. Talking bright lights, blood, city. What was it called? I always forget it. What was it called again? Um, bright lights, big city, red blood. That's right. We got some red blood, some mm-hmm. some big city lights, some craziness all happening in 1980s horror movies around the New York area. Up next, if y'all like um, Egypt and uh, sand. And you like uh, like necklaces, uh, pendants that like like shoot blue, 80s blue lasers in your eyes, and you come like you know you, you get blind, but then you're not blind anymore. And then you like you can like travel through like worlds, but we can't see it because it, it wasn't in the budget. That's and exactly. If, <laughs> <laughs> if y'all like um, if y'all like uh, 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 an aunt who didn't know what the hell was going on half the movie. She was so confused and everything, and then she winds up dead that we don't see either because it's not in the budget. Then this is the review for you because we're all talking about Manhattan Baby. J.H. Allison, James Klein, what's happening, Allison? How is your uh, how's your Manhattan Baby doing? <laughs> well, this was uh, something else. I haven't I'd never seen this movie before, um, but I'd always meant to watch it, and uh, yeah. It's something. It's a movie. I thought this it movie happened. fucking sucked. I'm not <laughs> gonna lie. It's not that bad. I'm, I'm uh, with I mean, our boy uh, uh, Fulci. I'm with you. He said it sucked too, and he doesn't want his name yeah. on it, brother. I wouldn't mind a name Fol- on this shit either. Yeah, Fulci and uh, Dardano Sacchetti both hated this movie, but I mean, I see why. It was boring um, as shit. Know, well, yeah, it was fucking bored yeah. during the whole time. I don't really even know what happened. It's, we I'm didn't so even get the fucking raven or whatever it was talking that fat dude he, we didn't even get an eye poke I was like fuck just give me that yeah. at least and he, did, he bit every part of this fucker's skin except for his fucking eye alright but you could tell though that it should have been a lot better of a movie they just cut the budget too much for him to do anything with it exactly the studio was like that don't work for me brother you want what <laughs> we ain't doing that what do you hmm. think this is alright well, I mean, they told him originally that he was going to have an, the money he wanted. Yeah. And then they t- they went back on it. But anyway. And like. It, it's a thing. I don't know, man. Like, I just thought like it would just. I think what they were trying to do is they wanted to make it where when you have your 80s Egypt eyes, you can travel through different dimensions and stuff and you can take journeys through these dimensions. Okay. Because yeah, that's, yeah. that's what the uh, Tommy. Uh, don't call me hill figure kid was saying all right right he he was and this is a uh, broken English he was basically saying he was he, he could travel he was like go on this game where he travels and that's how he brought back this pharaoh statue and shit but we didn't get to see it a bit because I'm guessing what they were planning to do in this movie was show like a lot of cool 80s effects where you're like going through like time and space but they cut all that shit yeah that's what I'm thinking is that yeah. when you know when he talked when Tommy talks about them going on a voyage then they were actually going to film them in Egypt or whatever in, in ancient Egypt, and they just couldn't afford it. Like after the after the budget got cut, they couldn't afford it. Should have had that uh, oh. Star Trek money, brother. Then they would have been on their good voyage. Well, yeah, they had the Star Trek money. Right. Probably <laughs> one episode of Next Generation cost more than this entire movie. <laughs> it probably did. Well, you know, didn't the uh, didn't the first Star Trek movie come out around this time too? It came out in nineteen seventy nine, I think. Okay, yeah, there you go. 1982 would probably been Star Trek 2. Yeah. So, but uh yeah, I mean, we'll you know, we'll talk about it, but I just thought this movie was a little uh a little on the boring side, but it did have some uh some uh, little gems in there that we'll talk all about. But mm. because I'm parched as we start in this uh 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 Retro Blood podcast out, how about mm. we do our weekly Oktoberfest beer for the week? Let's do it. And since Let's you went first last time, Allison, I'll go first this time. Perfect. Okay. So funny about this one, I actually just picked this one up today. Um, originally, I was going to do the Shiner one, but I like—I think I've talked about the Shiner, Shiner Oktoberfest like a thousand times on here. So I want to do some different ones that I've never had before. Okay. So by my surprise, 
-hmm. there was a gas station that had all these like fancy craft beers in it in our local town of Asheville. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Like that this, I used to go to this gas station a lot because it's kind of near a job site I go um, to, and right. I never. And I just walked past, and I was just like, they have like one of those things where you can pick like six. You, you know, kind of like how Krog, uh, Ingles does, where you can pick out six, and they, you know, it's like ten bucks or whatever. This gas station had that, and there was all these like fancy like uh, uh, craft beers there, and sure. I bought this one. It's a one pint one, and this one is from Edmonds. Uh, uh, was Edmund Oast Brewing Company. Okay. And I never heard heard of them before. Let me see if it's telling me where they're from. Oh, here Are they we, from oh, South Carolina? Yes. Uh, Charleston, South Carolina. Exactly. That's what I figured with that name. Yeah. Okay. Is that like a is that like a South Carolina name or something? Um. Yeah. It's um. Um. Let me remember exactly what it is. Yeah. It's pretty cool looking um, can on here. It's, it's like it's like this. Um, it's kind of like a white background. It's all like in this black text, and there's like a picture yeah. of a goat on there. Yeah, he's like uh, seeing I mean, stars. It, it, Maybe he's drunk. Yeah, I'm sure he is. I'm sure that's the that's the point of that. Um, I can't remember the exact history of Edmund's Oast, but it's a, uh, um, it's a it's a um, a restaurant. That's what I'm looking for. It's a oh, restaurant, okay. and they make their own beer. Uh, in Charleston, I thought it was going to be a um, an antique an antique shop. <laughs> All right, like our uh, like our boy. What was his name? Mark Mark Cross. Marcado Marcado Marcados and shit. Yeah, God, was, what a uh, useless fucking character that was. Like speaking, like we'll get to it, but there's all kinds of things that you could just tell just weren't filmed for this movie. Yeah, and Marcado's backstory is one of those. But uh, but yeah, Edmonds Oast is um. Um, it's a, it's a, like a brew pub, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's kind of cool that you had that. I've had Edmund, Edmund's Oast beer oh, really? before. I never had it. Yeah. So this is their house Oktoberfest Marzen style lager. Let's pop it open, brother. Got to get the audience what they want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Buddy, that's what we got. All right. Let's see what this one tastes like. <sighs> okay. Okay. Oh, wow. It's good. It's kind of. It actually, it kind of tastes a little bit like the one from last week. But this yeah. one's a. This one's actually almost a little bit smoother than the one from last week. Like the, like the one from last week and the Shiner one, they have mm -hmm. um, a little bit more of a. Kind of like more of a malt, taste to them. This one's a little bit more, like, yeah. more smoother when it comes out. So it's, it doesn't like, the uh, the maltness doesn't like hit your tongue right away. So it's good. Yeah. I really like multi beers, um, but uh, yeah, Evans Oats makes decent stuff. I think. Yeah, they have a um, cool can and everything. So yeah, shout out to them, uh, Edmonds. I never been to Charleston, so you know, maybe one day oh. if we ever get sponsored. By the way, we're not really sponsored by any of these beers. We just like talk no. about them because that's what we do. But if they want to be, if they no, want to sponsor if us, a beer, I'd, lo I'd love to have a beer sponsor. If any beer sponsors us at all for anything, I will get drunk on the air like no problem okay like if Don't like care. if like if they just sent us free beer that'd be great i'll talk about your beer 24 7 mm -hmm. all right and you know if we get big out there we can do a retro blood beer and i would love to do an oktoberfest beer that'd be nice yeah because it could be like red maybe. yeah exactly yeah like blood we just gotta yeah, find maybe cool. maybe we have to find like a german like movie you know what I mean? German movie. And they call it that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Next next Oktoberfest, maybe we'll do all German movies. I don't know if I've ever seen a German horror movie. Oh, there's plenty of them. I can't name one right now, but there's plenty of them. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, like, uh, good, maybe, a, maybe a brewer would like to do a red retro blood. That'd beer. be fucking awesome. That'd be awesome. We'll, we'll promote cool. that shit. Do a little QR code at the bottom or whatever QR they do. QR code. <laughs> you know what I mean? Website. We'll promote your website and everything. Huh? You guys hit me up. Retro, oh, yeah. Retroblood69 at Gmail. All right, everybody. <laughs> if you if you want us to sell your beer, and I'm ready to sell out right now. If you want us to sell your beer <laughs> or anything, I'll sell. If you pay me, I'll sell anything. Okay? Yeah. yeah. If you have one of those special Halloween 3 Cochrane rings, I will show that too. All right? <laughs> Yeah, that'd be great. We we have to do our own ad reads though. That's that's, that's that'd be catch. awesome. Like, have, Bro, I'll read your ad read drunk as awesome. shit. So I'll oh, do yeah. it. 
All right, what do you got, Allison? What do you got? All right, what do I got? So it's weird that you would mention um, this because I was kind of in a bind because we kind of did we kind of did this uh, show on not spur of the moment, but we did it quicker than we thought we were going to. Yeah. So I um, decided to get the uh, Shiner Oktoberfest. Oh, nice! But you, <laughs> I never you had, had it. Before. Oh, you never had no, it. I've okay, had well it there you go. No. That's good. So though. we're gonna open one. I got cans, so we're gonna open that one. It is, it is, it's a uh, very good go. one. I really like it. I buy it every year. I got to pour it into a glass here because I'm made like that. Um, I like the color. Yeah. Oop, it's kind of like this orangey. Like in, so it's, yeah. yeah, it's like real orangey looking. Oh, I poured too much too much on that one. Let's see. Too much foam. Let's see if I can taste it. Now, you're more of a can guy, huh? No, no. I prefer bottles. Yeah. But it's just been cans lately because that's what I found has just been in a can. I think they do oh, sell the good. bottles. It's good. It's good. It's malty. Yeah. Um, like yeah, like you were saying, it's malty. It tastes good. I like it. I think I like it. Maybe. Mm, do I like it better than the Sierra Nevada one we did last week? Maybe. I don't know. It's a good beer though. Yeah. I thought the yeah. uh, the 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 one you're drinking around Shiner, that mm. one is also like a little bit more rich than yes, uh, some I other. Agree with that. Some other Oktoberfest. It just has a little more kick to it when it comes to the richness. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't mind that, but I kind of like the, um, I kind of like this style, like the more, like just a little bit more calm on that style. Um, but yeah, so we got some good ones here today. So oh, it also has yeah, a mine. There's also a fat dude with a horse. He's riding a horse on this one too. That's interesting. Why should it be yeah, like, they're like, probably sign? like some, it's, it's probably like some kind of colonial thing. They're all about that shit down in yeah. uh, Charleston. Like all about like, uh, pirates and uh, oh, cool. colonial shit whatever well there you go brother but there it is Slavery the two like, oh. damn okay <laughs> no. yeah, wow anyway <laughs> got dark for a second there right. here we go have you been uh uh allison have you been uh possessed with the uh the the necklace the the, the 80s blue eyes uh pharaoh necklace um, I have before, but I'm currently not possessed by them. Okay. But I, I love that we've got blue lasers back again. I know that that yes, I did love that too. Yeah, and red Italian blood. Yeah, <laughs> very red. I was like, what the? All right, we'll get there. But uh, but yeah, yeah. I thought it was like uh, <laughs> strawberry preserves or something. But anyway, <laughs> uh, something. Uh, but yeah, two great beers. Everybody check it out. Shiner Oktoberfest, and we got Edmonds Oast. Beering Company Oktoberfest. Check them out if you buy your local stores. Check them all out. But let's get into our weekly history segment where we talk about what is going on in the world of what the pro wrestling. On? What is going on in the world of the pro wrestling and the metal music around the release date of Manhattan Baby, which is August 12th, 1982. All right. Mm -hmm. So I'll go first. Um, I I was trying to watch this whole episode of uh, uh, NWA Mid Atlantic, but I didn't have that much time. I'm a busy guy. All right. Mm -hmm. But I do want to tell you. I do want to talk about something which I thought was pretty interesting. Was during this uh, particular um, era, nineteen eighty two, they were doing like this really big tag team tournament. Okay, and it was pretty much like a like a uh, uh, it was like kind of like almost like a worldwide tournament too because they were going to all kinds of different places. All yeah, right? they were obviously doing like you know the Midland area like Greensboro, Charlotte, Richmond, Atlanta, Fairview, Saint Petersburg, but they would also go and stop by Japan as well too, okay. and. You know, we have like the teams in here. You had the you know, the Funks were in there. Um, you had like Sergeant Slaughter was in there with Don Cronodal. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the most uh uh like um <laughs> yeah, Dusty Rhodes is in there. Okay, and some of the, the wow, teams. Nineteen eighty two. Yes, I believe oh, okay. he was. So he because he was he would have been coming up from Florida to do that. Yeah. He was still in well, Florida at that point. Yeah, they still. Yeah. By, well, sorry, they also did a stop at Florida too, so okay. that makes sense. Him being up in there. Um, also, too, we had um, let's see, we had Adrian Adonis and Jesse Ventura from the AWA were in here, and we also had Mister Fuji and Mister Saito from the WWF were in here, 
And we had Ole yeah. Anderson and new partner Stan Hansen, the teams from the Mid Atlantic area. So mm -hmm. this is like a they were they this is like a big tournament. It was like almost like a whole NWA, you know, big tournament. And all I gotta say is Ole Anderson and and new partner Stan Hansen, is that the most redneck team you've ever heard in your life? Yes. I mean what the But fuck? I thought that was amazing. Was he uh, was Stan Hansen like dribbling like tobacco juice down his chin and all into his chest? He probably stuff? was. Probably was. Okay, that's like but, his gimmick. Yeah, but this tournament was basically going on during the release of Manhattan Baby, and like this, it, it was such such a big tournament because, like I said, they would just go everywhere. So, so let's see a couple of things when I was reading about it was this whole thing was set up, and it was set to begin with the first city tournament taking place in the mid-Atlantic flagship city of Greensboro, brother. Godly. Oh, yeah. You know, bit, I talked about how much I like Greensboro on here because mm -hmm. I go visit there all the time for work. Yeah. For, it's really interesting to me. For such a big history wrestling town, I feel like there's not a whole lot of wrestling there. Even the wrestling goes there, but I just feel like, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, they used to have, like, some really good shit in Greensboro. So. Yeah, so I remember when uh, remember when we went to see AEW there. Yeah, uh, in the same building that this show you're watching took place in. Um, but w around that time, I can remember Jim Ross saying that Greensboro had had been a dead city for a long time. So somehow, like just wrestling, just left Greensboro. Like the wrestling, the excitement for wrestling left. Uh, left Greensboro. Occasionally um, I've run into people like older people in shops that'll remember. Um, and they've told me a lot of stories about wrestling uh, in Greensboro, but yeah, it's just weird that like wrestling was so hot there yeah. for so long. And now it's just like, people don't even know that there ever was wrestling there. Yeah. It's very interesting because like it was such a hotbed for the, uh, the Southern style, you know, yeah. mid Atlantic Crockett, you know, like style wrestling. I think WCW was more like Atlanta. You know what I mean? Yes. But like the Mid Atlantic and um and Crockett was that was definitely like you know, Greensboro. That's what they would have a lot of their big events, especially their Starcades. So but this is yeah, this I is, think, go ahead. I was gonna say I think maybe there's a, I mean I haven't researched this, but I think th it probably kind of started dying when Crockett sold to Turner and all that shit moved to Atlanta. Yeah. I can see that. It was just at that point, it was just so far away, and they started having shows in Atlanta, and they didn't have Starcade in Greensboro anymore. Um, although I've seen WWF in Greensboro a couple of times, and it was pretty hot, but that was like during the 90s, though. Yeah, I mean, you know, during so, the Attitude Era. So they would also, too, they would have tournaments in uh, other mid Atlantic cities, like I was saying, like Charlotte, Richmond. Mm -hmm. Georgia held their big tournament in late February, and some of which was televised in Japan. So Florida wow. also held a tournament in St. Petersburg at the end of March. Then in April, Western Region's winners were announced. The entire Western part of the tournament was was created as part of the original tournament story. However, the Eastern Division finals actually took place held in May in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. So, and then uh, at but, the Coliseum, at the Coliseum, yes. So they, there was uh, tournaments planned in Knoxville and Toronto territories, uh, but those cities. Um, as well as other cities in Florida and, and Georgia, but they never materialized. So they were trying to do like a big worldwide, well, Japan and a lot of uh, city, a lot of states in uh, America, worldwide tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, so to, behind the scenes, Ole Anderson had somewhat of a falling out with the Crockett's over the booking arrangements of Ole left the mid-Atlantic area with the belts and declared himself and Stan Hansen the new NWA World Tag Team Champions. They wrestled exclusively with those titles in Georgia, and their title reign was barely, if at all, mentioned in the mid-Atlantic area. Right. So there we right. go, brother. Ole causing so, some trouble. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so basically Ole and Stan took the titles and claimed themselves the champions, but they only... Wrestled those, uh, defended those titles in Georgia, and then you know Crockett was basically like, "I don't know what you're talking about." Yeah. So then, after this, months later, with Dory Funk Jr. now booking the Mid Atlantic Territory, the Crockett's mm -hmm. got their belts back, and Sergeant Slaughter and Don Cronodal would when wound up being named champions following another uh, fictional tournament. Wow. No, no, following another tournament uh, situation in Japan, which is another story for okay. 
Well, basically, I'm reading it. I'm reading it this off the uh, this post over here, but because okay. this has a, a lot of cool information about this tournament. Because I was really curious, uh, because the the episode I was watching on Mid Atlantic had uh, Eddie Graham on there talking about the tournament, and I just thought it was very fascinating because. This tournament, like he, they were really like they were legit in all these cities, like from Florida to Georgia to to you know Carolinas uh, to Japan. Mm-hmm. They made a stop in Japan, and they were trying to go like into New York. They were trying to go through all these cities in this big, like basically like big ass tournament. I, I just thought it was a very like neat and cool idea. Like this is basically like this right here is basically the building blocks of what would be known as the Crockett Cup later on. Yeah, I was going to mention that because Crockett, um, Jim Crockett Sr. was really into tag team wrestling. And uh, Crockett Wrestling was known as a tag team territory. Like, he really pushed tag teams over anything else. Like, you know, you'd have four or five tags on a card. Your main event was a tag match. Um, But, uh, yeah, so so this was like kind of a precursor to the uh, Crockett Cup for sure. Yeah. So, very interesting, very interesting stuff over here. I, I didn't really see who the winners were because it looks like there was some confusion. So it looks like the the ultimate winners were Sergeant Slaughter and Don Cronodal, but then they would have a uh, another tournament that happened a little later on in the year, and that's when we would get more of like the um, we would get like Ray Stevens and Pat Patterson being on this tournament, Adrian Doss and Jesse Ventura, like I was saying, like more people throughout like the different promotions happening on this on this uh, tournament. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, very cool. Um like I said, like this is like a big uh, you don't really see that nowadays. You know what I mean? It's like it's kinda like if the only company I could think about doing this would be AEW. And if they yeah. had like some big like tag team tournament, they'd probably bring in like CMLL, they would bring in New Japan. They might be able to bring in uh, TNA back, uh, even though they got something with WWE. MLW would be on there, you know, just you know, going through the different uh, like uh, territories and bringing your guys in to have like a tag team tournament. But it's- yeah, I mean, I'd like to see something like that again. I mean, AEW kind of does that with Forbidden Door, yeah, in a way. Well, but it's not a tag tournament, but it could be. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, I'm talking about like, you know you could do a tag team tournament on like different shows like you can have like part of the tag tournament on oh i see you know i mean it could be on like the triple a so you know stuff like that yeah yeah that would be cool so but yeah pretty cool stuff um you know like you were saying before like tag team wrestling at this point in time in 1982 was a lot bigger deal than it is in 2024 right so yeah. for all you, you know, people who listen to us and listen to our wrestling portion, you know, tag teams were like they it just uh they just had more what was it more prestige pretty much? Yeah, I would definitely kind of say that. Yeah. Plus you had more dedicated tag teams. Yeah. Cuz you know like like WWE has kind of just trained people that a tag team is just two people you put together. But there's more to it than that. Like, you have to have, like, a team that works together really well. Yeah. Um, you know, in the 80s, they had tons of that. You know, they had the Andersons. They had um, Arn Anderson and um, Tully Blanchard. They had the Rock and Roll Express. They had the Midnight Express. They had the Fantastics. The Russians. Um, the Russians. Um, lots of them. Yeah. Um, but there's just not a lot of that anymore. I mean, like, the, the best tag team in WWE – is probably the Usos, and they broke those guys up. Well, you know, you got the uh, who is the, who is the God WWE's tag team division has always been like kind of well nowadays it's always kind of been like a little rough. Like I can't even th- I guess the Judgment Day. I can't even think Judgment Day. I guess, but yeah. I mean they're in a faction together. Well, I guess JD and Finn go together. Yeah, because they're both Irish or whatever. But um, but you know, it's just WWE tag teaming is just so random. DIY like, it's is just not like too here's bad. two guys, you know. Here's Braun yeah. Strowman and John Cena. They're a tag team. I thought now. you were going to do Braun Strowman and that kid. Oh, I didn't think about that. Yeah, that was that's a perfect example. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean Braun Strowman and, and that kid. little kid, Nicholas, right? Nicholas is a tag team champion. Wait, did people complain that David Arquette won the world title? Like, were, weren't you the one that like showed me like it's like, bro, you could buy these toys like these, you know, like the uh, WWE figure, and you can create your own Nicholas. 
Like, who the <laughs> fuck would want to do that? <laughs> Nicholas build a figure is a little teeny tiny guy with the yeah. God. Good stuff. Truman. What the fuck? All right, Allison, what we got Big for the metal dude. music? All right, so you know, as we do on the show, we talk about the history, history, history of metal. Um, and we usually talk about, you know, a 1980s metal concert or band or something. But a couple of weeks ago, we broke the rules because it's our show and we're all about breaking rules. We can rules, do what we so want, we, brother. We do whatever we want. Unless I Let's have a beer out. sponsor paying me money, I will do what I want. Yeah, yeah I'll do what I want. You, you don't control me. <laughs> but anyway, so we t- a couple of weeks ago, we talked about, uh, we were doing a Fulci movie and we talked about the band Fulci and how their new album kind of goes along with the movie New York Ripper from a couple of weeks ago in the archives. You guys want to listen to that. Um, but this week, because our fantastic film had an Egyptian theme, which I love all Egypt- Egyptian stuff, I wanted to talk about a band that we probably wouldn't even get another chance to talk about, and that's the death metal band Nile. Um, are you are you familiar with Nile? Uh, Allison, I'm very familiar with Nile. Did I ever tell you the story that I wound up on the Nile tour bus? <laughs> I don't think so, but this sounds great. <laughs> All right, let me tell you really quick. I'm okay. pretty sure I said this before. Like, I feel like I've, I talked about this before, but maybe, maybe, but I don't. Maybe, remember. maybe it was just me and you in person. I don't know okay. if I, I don't know if I said it on the show before. All right, so I used to be part of like back in the day. All right, which is like, uh, God, what year was Wednesday? It? I'm a little old. You know what I mean. Not, well, you know. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Like, I think it was around like 2010. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to think when 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 my uh my moshing days were. You know what I mean? Well, it was before you fucked up your back. That's for sure. Yes, that's for sure. Uh, I'm pr- okay. I it was like it had to be like 2012. I'm guessing. I don't. I don't really remember to remember to be honest with you. Okay. So I used to be part of this moshing group in, in yeah. Dallas called the Pit Bulls. Shout out to them. Yeah. Anybody listening? Shout out. Shout out Pitbulls. Sorry, I had a burp there. Fucking Oktoberfest, bro. It hit me. All right. Mm. But anyway, I was part of this, you know, the Pitbulls guy. And so we used to go to a lot of like death metal shows. So that's how I know so much about like death metal because we used to go Mm. to those shows all the time. And like, you know, traditional death metal has not always been like my main thing, but I do like it, especially the shows. I do like their shows. So I remember, you know, we used to like there was this band in Dallas, um, Rigor Mortis. All right. Oh God, I love Rigor Mortis. Yeah, we used to see them all the time. Okay, so and obviously every time a death metal band, literally, bro, every time a death metal band would come, that Rigor Mortis would be on the fucking card because they lived there oh, in sure. Dallas. They just show up. So I remember one time, I'm not exactly sure the whole scenario, but there was a reason where I think they, I think the 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 leader. Of the organization was trying to get me into the Nile show, and yeah. like because I didn't have my, I don't know I I don't really know how it happened, but for some reason he was like, "Hey Greg, come with me." I was like, "Okay." So we go random me on this bus, okay, and then we have half the members from Nile on this bus, okay, and it was like the most calmest experience I've ever seen, okay. <laughs> They're on this bus. Oh, yeah. They're cool. watching some TV show. I don't even know what the show was, but it was like like it was like just some calm. Na- I, in my head, it was just some calm nature show, and everybody was just talking about normal. Like, hey, you know, hey, hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? Because they knew they knew the guy personally. They knew the uh, the 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 main guy of the uh, the pit bulls. They knew him, and they introduced me and everything. They're like, tell me, hey, what's up, man? What's up? You know, you know, just talking like normal. You know, they're talking a little bit about their tour. They're talking a little bit about just normal stuff. Like, hey, how's the kids doing? You know what I mean? And yeah. um, and with me, I was like sitting here because they were like the headliners. They were the headliners for this show that we were going to. Mm-hmm. And I believe I believe this happened in Fort Worth because they we would we would, they would do shorts in Fort Worth and Dallas a lot, but mostly at the Fort Worth, I believe, is around that particular area. And all I could think about in my head was, I don't know any of these fucking guys, and I bet there's some hardcore fan out there that would love to be in my spot right now. And I was just like, because I didn't really know Nile at the time. Like I wasn't sure. like a huge fan. I was just like, I felt kind of guilty. I was like, man, there's probably some hardcore dude out there that this would be like the highlight of his fucking year. You know what I mean? Meeting one of his favorite bands. And I don't even know who these fucking guys are. <laughs> okay. 
so but obviously you know when i went to the shows and i heard their stuff i know who nile you know is after that but at the time like i didn't i didn't know, fucking know who they were so but go on great album yeah so uh but yeah so nile um i mean they're just to you know people from where i'm from they're just they're low they're kind of a local band they're from greenville south carolina and they were like the first oh really like, i didn't know that yeah they're from greenville and they're like the wow. first like local band that got big yeah that i liked yeah um you know what i mean like they're the first metal band that i could think of that that got really big from here from this area and it's just kind of cool you know and then um they all they also were always different because they had that egyptian theme like yeah. all their stuff is egyptian looking and their their um their merch is egyptian looking and like the, all their songs have egyptian type names and uh, carl sanders the main guy in, in nile he's done some solo albums that use like egyptian instruments it's not like death metal at all uh, it's just all like instrumental egyptian I like type it. amorphous music. does that too cool. yeah amorphous does that too it's similar to that um but they had they just released a new album that came out i don't know probably a week or two ago uh yeah yeah about a week or two ago um that's called the underworld awaits us all and i wanted to talk about it for a minute because it's fucking fantastic it's i think it's the best album i've ever made um it has a different sound because they have different people in the band now um they have carl and the drummer george but they have um uh everybody else i think is different so there's this they have this new vocalist that's just fantastic like it's it doesn't have that like guttural like like death metal sound like he he has a real kind of a high-pitched, screamy voice, kind of like the Dima Borgir guy. So it sounds a little bit like that. It's a little bit black metal-ish, but it's still really technical and really death metal. And um, it's I think it sounds particularly good on uh, the second song on the album, which um, kind of is kind of a long title, but I'm going to try and read it, read it out. But it's called The Chapter for Not Being Hung Upside Down on a Stake in the Underworld of Made to Eat Feces by the Four Apes. Um, but that song is really, really good. And I wouldn't have read that title if I didn't really think the song was great. So, uh -huh. But this is a good song. Um, but I really, really, really like Nile, And I really feel like, I mean, those guys have been doing this for nearly 30 years. So basically, you should have been more on the than tour 30 bus. Years. You should have been on the yeah. tour bus. I could have. I could have been on the tour bus instead of you. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, man. <laughs> oh, but yeah, that would have been fantastic. I would have loved to meet the now guys although they're not really hard to meet they're super outgoing and if you go to a show they'll probably just be hanging around yeah um and they are coming back they're gonna play the radio room in january oh, okay so i gotta go to that that's gonna yeah be that'd be cool it's them and it's them and uh, six feet under which has um oh wow uh the original uh cannibal course vocalist wow um it's like a dual headlining and uh show and then there's this australian tech death band called psychroptic i think is what they're called and they're really fucking good too. So this will be a, that'll be a really good show. It's sometime in January, but yeah, we need to try and go to that. Um, but yeah, everybody, if you want to hear some really good technical death metal about Egyptian gods and pyramids and shit, check out the underworld awaits us all from Nile just came out. Go buy it. Yeah. Some good stuff like on here, like, um, you know, Nile's like more like your traditional death metal. But it is, yeah. I do like it how they do, like you were saying, they do add that, like, you know, Egyptian sound into it. Um, and I, I thought the guy's vocals is pretty good on here. So I thought it was, uh, yeah, on that new fun. one, especially. Um, yeah. not the last two a whole lot, like Vile, uh, Vile and Nilotic Rites is a good album. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you go back to like Black Seeds of Vengeance, I mean, those and then, and, uh, in their uh, Dark and Shrines, those are all good albums. I mean, don't get me wrong, but it, the back, when you go back that far, it's pretty much like, this is traditional death metal. You know, this is like old school death metal. Yeah. But like they've kind of branched out into more of a, um, more of a different kind of sound now. And I really, really, really like what they're doing. But yeah, if you saw them in like 2010, that was like, I guess those whom the gods detest tour probably. And that was a really good album too. So that would have been a really good time to see them. Um, that would have been, uh, uh, were there three of them or four of them? For or do you what? remember? For what? For Nile, were there were they a trio or did they have like a another guitar player? Man, that's been forever. Okay. Uh, but yeah, for a while they recorded as a no. trio. I've only and seen probably once. got somebody to tour anyway. Oh uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, um, I love Nile. I mean, Nile's fantastic. I mean, they're good dudes, good local band. Um, support Nile. Go buy their album. Out now.
yeah. on vinyl. Yeah, there's some good stuff. All. Yeah. So, like I said, like if you guys like traditional death metal and stuff, this is definitely yeah. pretty fun. And, you know, I, I remember seeing their tour, but it's been like fucking forever. But I, you know, anytime you go to like a death metal show, it's always pretty fun, pretty loud. Yes. Everybody's going crazy on there. So, good stuff. I like it. Speaking of, uh, well, not really like, but let's let's see. Uh, let's talk about who booked this shit. Yeah, who booked this shit? All right. Of course, it's our boy Fauci. How do you say his first name? Luc- Luciano. Luc- it's Lucio Fulci. Lucio, brother. It, it's a Lucio and a Fauci, brother. Exactly. Huh? That's exactly how you say it. That's yes. how you say it. <laughs> so I'm a big yes. fan of this Fulci guy. <clears throat> we talked yeah, about him great. before. You know, we talked about him like two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. All right, for New York Ripper. You know, he's done the. He did the whole City of the Living Dead. You know, yep. House by Zombie Cemetery. Too. Zombie too, brother. Fucking House by the Cemetery. Yeah. You know what I mean? Beyond. A couple Beyond. Yeah. A couple other shit. You know that we haven't seen yet. But boy, this fucking thing was horrendous. This fucking There's not movie. too many left though. This is the sixth Lucio Fulci movie we've done on the show. In three years. Yeah. So we've done him a lot. So we were always a big mm. fan of him, obviously. All right. This, this one just wasn't hitting for me. But there's reasons why. Yeah. It's right. sad. This movie could have been so much better. So here's the here's the, uh, here's the the breakdown. So Manhattan Baby was, was originally planned to have a larger budget than any of the films that Fulci did previously. And mm. he it was also the uh, the last time... That Fulci would work with producer, and I'm gonna fuck up this guy's name. Fabrizio de A- yeah. Angelis. Yeah. Did I get it right? <laughs> I think Holy so. Fuck. Yes. Holy shit! It's the first time ever you got the name right on the first try. Fabrizio you know what it is? You know what it is? It's, it's the uh, it's the Oktoberfest beer. beer. I know. I'm kind of like a. Lose your I'm kinda, I'm kind of like Popeye. You know what I mean? <laughs> except for you spinach. Have your spinach. <laughs> no, no. Except for spinach, I need beer. Okay. Yeah. That's how I can get these names right. All right. So, uh, uh, Fauci, he wanted to experiment and create a film more, you know, enthralled and immersive than his previous in his previous entries entries into the horror genre. Like Mm -hmm. we were saying, he wanted more effects. You know what I mean? He wanted to use special effects that were optical rather than practical. Okay. So what does that mean exactly? So a practical effect is a physical thing that they build. Uh-huh. But an optical effect would be like like a camera trick? Yeah, I think he wanted to do... Okay, you know, okay, this is what I'm guessing. But, you know, I think he wanted to do CGI before CGI was like a thing. Oh, right, okay. You know what I mean? like, And also maybe do some camera effects to make... like. I think he really wanted to. I think he really wanted to have like the kids or whoever go into those dimensional worlds, and then we would yeah. see some like sort of like '80s trippy shit going on. Right. Yeah, I think you're right. Like that's the only thing I could think of when it's come to that. And like all the like the glowing doors and uh, all the like eyeball lasers that, pew, yeah. pew, pew, that shoots out and like all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So he was trying to make like more like yeah more of like the uh, the effects in that way more than like the gory and puppetry that was being like in some of his other films. So the screenwriter uh, Scaditti <laughs> Tartano Sacchetti. We so, talked about him during New York Ripper. Too. God, I always talk about this he, guy. He, yeah, Dardano he wrote Cicchetti. a lot. Yeah, Dardano Sacchetti. He wrote he wrote he wrote a lot of uh Fulci films. Yeah. So he states that the film's budget was cut from eighty million dollars to forty million. Liar. Whatever that's a, the whatever the uh, Italian currency is. L- yeah. <clears throat> was well, it Lear? Lear. Yeah, it, yeah, it's Lear, but is it well, okay. The number I have is eight hundred million to four hundred million lire. Yeah, lire. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how much dollars that is, but basically they cut the budget in half. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Basically, yeah. I cut it basically in half. So it's good. It's good. <clears throat> Damn, got the mm. Oktoberfest going through me. I can't even say his name. Skitetchi, whatever. Collaborated yeah. with his wife on a script originally titled. The Evil Eye. Bro, that sounds yes. about the most Italian film I've ever heard in my life. 
the yeah, evil the evil eye. eye is a very Italian thing. What's it? The il, il, il mo, 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 What if they just had? What if they just had a whole film just with fucking eyes, like just poking out? You know, what I mean, just doing all kinds of crazy shit with eyes the whole time. Um. Well, that's okay. So that makes sense because I was trying to find a Manhattan Baby T-shirt because yeah. I think that the image in the movie is not great. The imagery could be good. Um, but and I found one that was called the. It just it had the girl on it. And like a pyramid behind her, and then it said the evil eye. And I'm like, why the fuck does it say the evil eye on it? But I guess I know now. Mm -hmm. That's what the movie is originally going to be called. Um, And it also kind of makes sense, too, in a way, because like I felt like this movie was um, heavily influenced by the evil dead in some ways. This movie? I think so, yeah. Like with the recording of the voices and things. Oh, yeah, that a little bit, yeah. I mean, kind of, like... I mean, I, I can I can see a very little bit of it, but I think just the movie was just so like badly paced that it's like I can I was just so bored during oh, most well, of it. Yeah, it's absolutely boring and and doesn't make any sense at all. I don't know how anything why anything was happening in this movie for the most. So part. our boy Skit, our fucking Skit. Why well, can't why can't I say his name? Sachetti. Sch- Sch- I'm just gonna say spaghetti. So our boy spaghetti. spaghetti. <laughs> okay. Sketchy. Which he mm. described. He, he described his script as an attempt to do a technological piece. Uh, he was attempting uh, to approach themes that were no longer classic or traditional gothic. Uh, he was trying to bring horror in a different direction. Which is weird because it ends up being very much traditional gothic horror. I, yes. I think it's. It looks like a there's something gothic about Universal it. Mummy movie or something kind of with no mummy. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay, I can see the mummy movies. Yeah. <laughs> So the film was shot in 1982 from uh, March 8th to the end of April around Cario in New York uh, and then at Rome. And then in Rome too. A second unit team was shooting at the uh, Enzo G. Castrello 1999, the Bronx Warriors around the same time. Yeah, that's also a great movie. So basically they were they were shooting 1990, the Bronx Warriors, and this movie at the same time. Yes. Um Bronx Warriors is a really good movie, by the way, if you've never seen it. Um, but yeah, the, so they did go to Cairo and they shot it in Egypt, and then they shot it obviously in New York. So, so between 1979 and 1981, uh, Fulci shot three different movies in New York City. Well, yeah, brother, he loved that place. Apparently, he did. Maybe yeah, our apparently. boy, uh, maybe our boy Argento told him about it. He was well, like, he oh, yeah, out. hey, uh, Fulci, uh, you should go by the, uh, the n- n- New York, man. You think it's, it's some Italian, uh, it's a field out there. All right? Every, <laughs> every Italian sounds like Mario to you, doesn't it? Yes. That's what I thought. <laughs> it's a me, a Fulci. Come on now. Come Gee. on. You guys, you guys, you got the Egypt and you don't got the budget for me. Come on now. That would be, uh, fantastic. There should be like a, <laughs> there should be like an image of like, Mario, but it's like Fulci's face on it. That'd be great. All right. So, Manhattan Baby was released in Italy on yeah. August 12, 1982. The film did gross uh, a pretty good amount. Uh, for it looks like four million. So, definitely uh, four hundred nine million lire. So, but it barely. Yeah. That means it barely made its money back, though. Yeah, basically, yeah, barely did it. It was picked up for a distribution in the United States in nineteen eighty four. But was but was released only theatrically. Has Eye of the Evil Dead. See, I thought it was like Evil Dead. Eye of the Evil Dead, brother. Mm-hmm. There was no fucking. The only eye shit we got in this film is people close up on their eyes. There's also no Evil Dead. Yeah, well, there's a there's a bird well, and a snake. Yeah, that's true. The birds were kind of Evil Dead, but I feel like um, the eye is that eye uh, on the necklace. You remember when the girl was wearing like the Doctor Strange necklace, like you know, that, like he's wearing in the movie. Yeah, um, that that has an eye on it. So this film was also released in the United Kingdom in 1983, directly to video, under the title "The Possessed." The Possessed. So this one didn't even get banned. Well, no. Like, look at it. <laughs> Nothing fucking happened in this fucking film. I <laughs> expect. <laughs> true. True. So Manhattan Baby would end the partnership, like I was saying before, between Fulci and De Angelis. Fulci mm-hmm. disliked the film, but stated that he had no choice but to make it, as De Angelis was obsessed with it. All right. 
Come on, now, folks. We we got the Egypt. We got the bloody eighties blue lights. What more do you need? Exactly. Huh? That's what I'm saying. What more do you need, Fletcher? So Fauci would say that it was a terrible movie. I'd venture to describe it as one of those setbacks that occur as you go along. Damn. Okay. Damn. Yeah. Sketty Sch- and his wife, which I'm not even going like, to fucking try her name, were also not pleased with the film's finished product, with the former stating that when the producers decided to cut three quarters of the budget, some of the special effects could not be realized, and the film was ultimately very poor. All right. So. Yeah, so there was like effects, which we'll talk about as we go, but like, yeah, definitely the effects where they're traveling that they uh, weren't able to do, probably. Yeah. So, but yeah, it looks like, you know, that's pretty much the, the whole um, story behind it. It usually, you know, obviously, you know, a lot of basically what, what they were trying to do with this, with the script and everything. It's kind of weird, though, because, like, I mean, I know your budget was, like, cut, but, mm-hmm. like, I get okay, I, I, I'm pretty sure, basically, they, I think the Fulci and his writing partner were trying to get the 80, the 80 that they needed, all right? And maybe De- they worked so many times with this same producer, this DeAngelis guy, so they thought mm-hmm. maybe, like, they could do something, like, you know, kind of like you know different like kind of like maybe because they've been such uh, high success with a lot of their horror movies that they just want to do something different at the time and they thought they were going to do that but then when the guy kind of agreed to do the movie then he cut it so much in half that they couldn't do the movie that they were thinking about so that's probably why they all kind of like just made the movie and just parted ways just to get rid of him because it sounds like Fulton didn't even want to make this movie but it, but the but producer, he but he had to because the producer's like, we gotta finish this. I really want this movie to be made. It's like, brother, listen, I went. To, he's like, come on now, I went to I went to Egypt, all right, and uh, I I got to find the evil eye, okay, and it it is sharp blue '80s lighting to me, and I feel possessed, and I can travel through worlds now. Now we're not gonna show me traveling through worlds. We're just gonna show me with '80s blue light in my face. All right, we're just gonna talk about it. Yeah. So, hmm. but us. What could have been? But speaking of talk about it, let's get into Manhattan Baby. Let's do it. That actually has no baby in it at all. Well, I think they're talking about the girl, but whatever. And then, like, Manhattan was like the cleanest New York I've seen in the 80s films. It was. It was. Yeah. But let's get it into was. it, everybody. Let's get into let's it. Let's do it. Yeah. Is it ready? I want to see it too, okay? The pictures are dead. Defective stuff. Oh well, we better get home, kid. I just want to know how you're involved with that photograph and what it has to do with our children. Before I answer, how much do you know about parapsychology? The jewel symbolizes evil. Part of the rules. Tommy, have you gone too? No, Tommy! No! Why is this happening to us? I don't understand it. We're powerless and it's frightening. And then the death of Weiler. And where did Luke go and Jamie Lee? And this illness of Susie's. I 
Because the man is evil. He makes my flesh creep. Help! <laughs> 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 Alright, so we start off the movie with a dad named <laughs> Professor George Hacker. Hacker. Hacker Smith. <laughs> well, just Hacker. I just added the Smith. Alright. So, this guy, I could not believe this when I was watching it. He was like, mm-hmm. hey, to his like assistant guy, yeah, I'm going to bring my daughter back, Susie, I'm going to bring her back a, a scorpion. A scorpion. She might be uh, afraid of it, but it's okay. And I was just thinking, motherfucker, you went all the way to Egypt to bring your yeah. back some scorpion. Motherfucker, I just go to Florida, Miami. How are you going to get that on the plane? Like, Who's yeah. that? I, I, how is he going to get a scorpion? Brother, on the this is 1982. Plane? They don't have customs. You just bring whatever oh, you want. That's true. They don't, they don't, they don't give but I'm just saying, that. brother. But it's fucking. <laughs> I had two scorpions in the 90s yeah. show up in my mm-hmm. toy box in Miami, Florida. You don't need to go to Egypt. I got scorpions right for you, right, right for you, brother. Okay. Yeah, I was. That was kind of funny too when she's like, um, uh, <laughs> the guy's like, remember to tell her it's a symbol of death. Yeah. <laughs> and then the guy's like, and then her dad's like, well, that's kind of heavy for a nine-year-old, don't you think? <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like so well, he's gonna bring her a scorpion. That's how we do it in Egypt. All right. Well, oh, Susie's but- there with him though, so that's kind of yeah. weird too. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention the uh, who booked this shit. Apparently, they added all those Egypt scenes in here because they wanted to yes. make it more like worldly. So, my question for you is, yeah. I wonder what that means. So, does that mean, like, originally the movie didn't start in Egypt? And if it not. didn't, it wouldn't have made any damn sense at all. Well, it could have been like, hey, this uh, this weird dude, George, he got blinded and he gave his daughter some necklace. That's what we start the movie. Starts off like, hey, we got back from Egypt, <laughs> and this is what we brought. Yeah. So anyway. now we uh, now we see Susie. She's trying to take a mm. picture, and she looks like unhappy taking these pictures. Mm. And I was like, you know what? I can feel you. you know what I mean, like you just you're just out yeah. there having a good time, and someone wants to take a picture of you, and they don't get a right angle, so they make you wait there for like five minutes. It's like just take the mm. fucking picture, okay? Just take the damn picture, yeah. So she now has like mutant powers. Which didn't really go anywhere. Like she can like control sand with her um, with her what, what what mutant character is can you know Sandman? I don't that's I don't know I guess okay. <laughs> sure. So yeah, that's that's happening, but that doesn't really go anywhere, and she doesn't even have like the 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 the, the necklace at this time. So I don't no. really know what's going on. That was a minute or two from now. So I like my notes here, and I don't know if you know about this, Allison, but I thought it was super funny. When I heard about this on a, a, a different show before, but they're in Egypt, right? And I was wondering where the hell is the Pizza Hut? Um, Do you what? know, Allison? You could look this up, everybody, too. Right next to the pyramids, but probably where they were at, there's a full blown Pizza Hut there. So well, you, that can, surprise you can li- you can literally eat Pizza Hut, and then look over to your like right or left, and you can see the pyramids. Yeah, that that's a real thing. Me at all. So I was just thinking, like, you know what? That's the most American thing we've probably ever done to Egypt, because you know most most of the, the Americans are gonna go down there. They're gonna watch the the pyramids. They're like, well, where are we gonna eat at? You know I mean? Might as well eat a Pizza Hut, because <laughs> we're used to that. Uh, I don't know. It's just so funny to me, because you know, like yeah. uh, here we just see all these pyramids and all like kind of like shots around there. And I was like, where's the Pizza Hut? At? Where, I'm gonna see it. But maybe it wasn't built yet in 1982. Probably wasn't built yet. So now we have this old witch lady, and she gives Susie the uh, the tablet, or the, the not tablet, but the uh, pendant, the necklace mm. of our story. Yes. And at first, though, it kind of looked like Susie was giving her like a twenty. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, for the. <laughs> and then this witch lady says the tombs are for the dead. Oh yeah. That's a great band name. Tombs are for the dead. That's a pretty yeah. That's pretty good. Wow. Yeah, there you go. Tombs are for the dead. Fucking death metal band. I like it. Mm-hmm. So now we have George. He's going to go uh, search this creepy old Egyptian uh, um, uh, tomb. tomb, 
And George, you know, he kind of remind me of. He kind of remind me of what Harrison Ford would look like old in the eighties. That's what I thought too. When I saw it, I made a note. I was like, he looks like Harrison Ford, but yeah. older. Yeah, like an older Harrison Ford. And I was like, you know what? Mm-hmm. Like, are they trying to copy Indiana Jones? What's going on over here? I, I like, don't know. Was uh, I don't think that a Raiders of the Lost Ark was out yet, but it was definitely. Uh, Let me do my research. A lot of that archaeologist type thing was definitely an influence, though, because that's what Hacker is. He's an archaeologist. I don't think we mentioned that. Yeah, yeah, that's what Hacker. Mm-hmm. All right, that's where he is. Let's see. Okay, no, no, no. Here we go. We had Raiders of the Lost Ark came out in 1981. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was 19, by my calculations here, June 12th, 1981. So, hey, mm-hmm. you know what? Maybe our boy Folk could have seen uh, it. It's like, it's like uh, Harrison Ford did it, so I'm going to do it too. All right. Find, find me somebody that looks like Harrison Ford, yes. and they get the guy from Peyton Place to be uh, Harrison Ford. Yes. So they go through this tomb, just like you would see in Indiana Jones, and there's booby traps, just like you would see in Indiana Jones, and... Yeah. The the booby trap leads to his assistant basically getting impaled by spikes, which also happens in Indiana. Which also happens in Indiana Jones, and of course George looks over saying like, "Oh man, I bet that sucks," and then he just goes <laughs> on. <laughs> and then he just wanders around, and then we get the tomb of the the pharaoh, and George is looking at it, and we finally have the eighties blue light has returned to the retro yeah. blood. <laughs> Yeah, shit's awesome. Love that 80s blue light. And now um, George has been infected by 80s pharaoh blue light 80s effects. And he's blind. And he's blind. Um, I also wanted to mention that this is another movie with a really good Fabio Fricci score. The soundtrack to yes. this is the best thing about this That's movie. That's true, yes, yes. It's uh, it's it's like Goblin, but it's like, yes. it's He does good stuff. He does, It's Goblin-like yeah. for sure, yes. yes. So now, George, like you were saying, he is now blind. Okay. And the doctor was like, ah, he'll be blind for like a year, but, you know, just take these tablets every weekend. I was like, how does he know it's going to be just a year? (laughs) Right. How does he know it's going to be a full year? So, like, I've never had one of those eye tests done, but, like, I I thought the noise that the uh, thing was making was really weird, too. Like, it makes those little pew. Well, um, like, when he was like, I don't know if they really make that noise. The thing I find. Um, pretty funny too is um, so let's say Allison you're going to Egypt right after you had your yeah. pizza hut and you go down to a deadly tomb you make it out of there alive and you get shot with 80s blue light would your yeah. first reaction be going to a uh, eye doctor I mean I guess well, right? it might be if I were blind but my question though is like he's going to an eye doctor in New York City though like how, why did he wait the whole all that time to get home before he went to a doctor? Well, maybe Egypt. They don't believe in that. Maybe, maybe they're like I mean, it is Egypt, and the they're 80s, like, oh, maybe you didn't want to go to a doctor. There, they're like, but. bro, you fucked up. We told you not to go in there. Yeah, that's uh-huh. true. <laughs> yeah, I don't Damn, know. That's a curse. They tell him. <laughs> all right, so now we have his wife Emily. By the way, Emily, she was in the 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 movie earlier too. She was just walking around trying to find Susie. Okay. Yeah, I thought that scene was kind of funny too, because like they uh, when she's walking around trying to find Susie, the Fritzy score is playing, and then all of a sudden you hear Susie talking, and the music just stops. Yeah, well, yeah. Like all of a sudden, like you just took the ra- like the needle off the record or whatever. But yeah, yeah. So, so, so the mom's, you know, uh, the mom, the Emily, she's the mom. Okay. Yeah. And she goes and meets uh, Luke, her coworker. And this fucking guy, God Lee, he was another fucking nerd in this fucking movie. Ugh. That guy was annoying as shit. Like, he, the guy with the weird yes, masks the mask and, and, like, and shit. Oh, Mark's nose God. and all that shit. Yeah, it's like, God damn, what an annoying oh, asshole. Remember when I saw him, I was like, we got to deal with this fucking guy the whole movie. Okay. So she come, they, they start talking. I don't know if they were flirting. And I was just going to be like, yo, Emily, look, you're married to this Harrison Ford lookalike. And you're flirting with this fucking nerd. God Lee. All right, so she was basically saying, like, yeah, we, we only had enough money or whatever to bring Susie along. We didn't bring Tommy to the trip. But we yeah, they have Susie. another kid they didn't take with them, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't in the budget, okay? It wasn't in the budget. <laughs> so now then now we have uh, Susie and, and Tommy. All right, they're hanging out with their uh, 
with their um their aunt Jamie Lee. No, she's an she's like their nanny. She's not an. I've never sure that was the aunt. No, she's like she's like their nanny. Like she's hired to like take care of them. Jamie Lee. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll take your word. And uh, the the kid, the guy that played Tommy, was also in House by the Cemetery. By the way. Nice. That's why I recognize his voice. And demons. Ooh. He was a kid in demons. Yep. I like this kid. But uh, demons was like three years later, so he's a little older. Yeah. Giovanni Frezza. That's his name in real yeah. life. That's yep. his, that's his government name. That's his government. Giovanni Frezza. Mm-hmm. Let me see what else he did. Hold on a second. I like this. According to his official MySpace page, he currently <laughs> resigns. <laughs> He has a MySpace page. Wow. According okay. to his official MySpace page, he currently resides in Chicago and is married father of three children who works as a director for um, militional technology companies. Bro, this guy should do fucking uh, um, conventions. Conventions, man. Yeah. That'd like, be fucking I would awesome. love to meet. Like, if I can meet that guy, go to, like, you know, the whatever building he works in, like, hey, can you sign my Manhattan baby stuff? Like, wow. Damn, I'll this guy was in a Blade of baby. Dark, too? Fuck. Yeah, he was in a Blade in the Dark. Yeah. Bro, this kid should, I mean, this guy should definitely do fucking convention. I don't know if he does. I mean, I, I never seen him around here. But if he lives in fucking Chicago, man, he should be on the fucking circuit. He should, yeah. Because those are some fucking badass movies he was in. Yeah, he was in some great movies. That's crazy. As a kid. I mean, fuck, I mean, there's no, I mean, half the fucking horror people, you know, they're, the half of them were kids, and they still go to the whole um, circuit scene, so I don't know why he hasn't done it. Exactly. Maybe he's too rich. Probably he's probably rich. making too much money doing that job he's doing. Yeah. So, you know, Susie, she's talking about this uh, necklace she got and everything, and now we see that Susie's back home, and she has a premonition. Oh, I was going to do that one. Well, didn't do it. Premonition. This is premonition. Saying it will thunder tonight. Say, the mom's like, say, yes. I thought this was hilarious too. But anyway, go ahead. I'll I'll, t- I'll tell this for in a minute. And she's like, it's gonna thunder tonight. She's like, and I was like, no, it's not. And then they get out of the room and start thundering. Like five seconds later. <laughs> like Fucking I can't figure stupid. out. Like I was a little confused by this because I can't figure out what the is there a time skip here. Because, like, remember, so Jamie Lee comes, or is her mom? One of the two comes to see her, and she's like, oh, it's time for dinner. And then uh, and then she's like, oh, I have a, I have a premonition that there's going to be thunder and lightning tonight. Yeah. And um, the guy's like, oh, not going to thunder tonight. And then, the like, then it pulls up out from the desk a little bit, and then it thunders and lightnings, but then they're, like, in bed. Yeah. So, like, I don't know, is there, like, this huge time skip? And then there's, know. like... You know, it's raining, but I don't know. It's kind of confusing. Well, a little bit. What I was wondering about is that mom heard that, and she was like, she still didn't give a fuck. All right? So now... Well, right, yeah. Yeah. So Susie's... She, okay, so Susie's getting worried about this thunder and lightning because she's she's uh, possessed by a, by a necklace of doom, which we'll find out later. Mm-hmm. And she's asking for her mama and papa, and she goes into the uh, their room and asks for the mom, and she says she's scared, and she, can she sleep with them? You know, in the room, yeah, and they're like, "No, we don't want you here." <laughs> it's, I mean, these parents suck, bro. They're like, "Oh, don't worry about it. Everything's fine. Everything's fine." You're and not like, really possessed. And like, and like, Emily, you know, she's she, George is blind, right? He has those fucking yeah. shit over his his, his, his eyes Which and he shit. Even wears when he sleeps, apparently. Yeah, and Emily, she just looks like. She's like, what's that fucking Luke toy guy doing? Maybe he can fuck me. I was like, this is what that girl was looking like. She no, looks like so maybe. depressed. She okay. Does. I don't know what the hell is going on with this girl. All right. So now after they're like, hey, don't worry about it. Like, you're all good. Like, this it's all fake. They tell her to get lost, basically, <laughs> their own daughter. And then she walks around the house to uh, that uh, great Italian synthesized movie, music. Oh yeah, this is great. This is a great. Uh, yes, uh, I love the music here too. I made notes about that. The Fabio Fritzi score is great in this point too. So she sees her necklace. She screams, and we cut the scene. Did she see the necklace? Yes, yeah, I saw thought the, she saw. I thought fa- she saw like a vision of yeah, the, the thing team. that lasered her dad outside the window. Yeah, but the the thing that lasered her dad is like. Like it's like almost mirror image of the necklace. Oh, the necklace, well, right. It is the same thing. It's on the yeah, necklace. It just don't, yeah, it's yeah. all dirtier. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So now we we do shots of a. We're in New York City, by the way. Yeah. By the way, and this is most. I don't know if they just got it at a good angle, but this is like the good, the best, cleanest looking New York I've ever seen. All right. And these well, shots okay. They so true. However, one thing I didn't notice about this and the uh, New York Ripper versus, um, Maniac, is that. Maniac was shot mostly in lower Manhattan, like near, near the Bowery and down in the, you know, around 10th Street, 17th Street, around that era, area. Um, all of the Fulci movies are all shot up on like the Upper East Side and the Upper West Side where like all the rich people live. Um, yes. So it is, it, it, you know, up around Central Park where it kind of is cleaner up that way than it is down in the area where Maniac was filmed. But yes, I see what you're saying. It's very clean. Yes, it's a very uh, clean area. Okay, so now we have George, and he is now talking in his records. <laughs> okay? He's all like, I must solve this riddle. All right? It's like, this tomb I found, the the members, they worship the forces of evil. Yeah, so that's why he thinks he got lasered. Because yes. uh, they, the, 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 <laughs> this temple that he went into, they must worship the forces of evil. And he's like talking into his TAC machine. How does that um, work? How does that work? You have a group, but you worship the forces of evil. Like, is that like a? Is that something like you you pick on a menu? Like, what evil are we doing today? I guess. I mean, like just ran, just generic evil. Like, you know, I can just no imagine like these uh, evil. the cult members. They go into like a Starbucks. Yes. Um. I'll have the uh. I'll have the satanic uh, latte. Yeah. Uh. No whip. Uh. Very uh, low on the cream. Maybe it's um. Uh, maybe do some uh, um uh, g- uh black goat milk. With that yes, as well, too. Right. Oh, I like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'll take the uh, the uh, the uh, devil worship latte. Yeah, uh, light light on the cream. <laughs> light on the cream. Um, yeah. Well, it's just another one of the things we never get to see because you know he talks about this uh, cult that worships evil, but we never find out anything else about them. And uh, Marcato later on tell uh, talks on the phone to someone as if he's part of some group, but we never find out who they are either. <laughs> I know, like, but okay. We'll <laughs> like, we don't find out anything. Like, what is happening no. here? Okay, so like, now... It's... So, George... So, okay. So yeah, George, go no, George, no, no, go. George is blind, but he finds the... Po- <laughs> I don't know why I wrote this down. He's blind, but he finds the pause and the rewind button fine. Yeah, I thought that was great. Well, he's like... Um, well, so, this is... <laughs> <laughs> that reminded me of the scene where she puts the tea down in front of him but doesn't tell him where it is. Oh my god. We should probably do a video because <laughs> if everyone can see our, our expressions on here, just like it's just so stupid. <laughs> well, so like, stupid. I, like I was watching this, like I, I just, for some reason this movie I decided to watch out in public. Like I I, I didn't want to get out of the house, so I went to the coffee shop to watch it and I'm like laughing out loud. <laughs> At the, literally laughing out loud in, at this movie. I just I could not control myself. Some of the shit in this movie is fucking So hilarious. after he does his uh, rewind, Susie now yeah. gets her 80s blue lights, blue uh, light yeah. eyes going, and then now we hear a bunch of screaming and suffering sound effects in the background. It sounds like <laughs> fucking stock footage, like stock sounds in the background. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was stock <laughs> sounds. All right, and then the door closes really s- s- tight. All right, and then now we have the Tommy... Tommy boy, he Tommy is, is like kind of a terror. By the way, we skipped the part where he's like, yeah, like telling his telling his nanny to fuck off or whatever he says. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, he's a little, being a little he, dick. Yeah, but anyway. But now he's walking slowly to uh, to the what's the what's the music on here again by the guy? Oh yeah, Fabio Fritzi. Fabio Fritzi. He's start is is uh, walking to Fritzi music. Mm-hmm. All right, Susie's watching him. And she's basically saying, no, don't do it. Don't go in there. Don't touch it. Don't do it. And he goes to the door. And she's like, oh, fuck. And then he disappears. So now George hears uh, the screaming from Susie Mm -hmm. and Tommy. And, of course, he's blind as shit. Yet he gets up the stairs just fine and goes into the room just fine. I also thought this was really odd, too, because this is the biggest apartment I've ever seen in New York City. I mean, I'm sure that, you know, up... uh, yeah, I was about to say up in up in the you know Upper West Side where the rich people are, there are probably some apartments that are really really big. Can you be rich like trying to find out the forces of evil? Maybe. I mean, 
I don't know. I've never, I've, I've known a few archaeologists, um, and none of them were rich. Uh, most of them barely got by. Well, was it in 1982? Must have been I, a hot no, job at the time. But this one, this one made it. Yeah, this one, this one made it to the top of the. Uh, Maybe, uh, food maybe, chain. maybe, maybe he, maybe he got, maybe he got some articles in that uh, Natural Geographic magazine. Is that a thing? Oh, maybe that could be. Yeah, he could be. Uh, maybe. He could have been a Natural Geographic writer. I don't know. I don't know how that worked. So after all this stuff, he's going in there and he's trying to find, you know, Susie and all this stuff. He doesn't see anybody in the room, uh, in Tommy's room, and like he's, uh, and then I guess Emily shows up as well too mm-hmm. all right and they notice that there's some egypt sand in the room so yeah i was a little confused by this myself so like she comes in the room and it looks like the carpet turns into sand mm-hmm. um well you say that so matter of fact as if that makes perfect fucking sense yeah of course but i does. guess like the evil <laughs> i guess the evil uh spirits um, of those who worship evil, <laughs> yeah. are uh, have have turned it into sand, and they just, I mean, they they think it's weird, but they don't freak out about it, and they stay in the house for some reason. Uh, there's also a Rubik's cube, which is like the symbol of the 1980s, so that was kind of cool. Yes, and I'm not sure what this Tommy is all about, but for some reason he decorated his room with some like no trespassing signs. I thought that was really weird too. Um, like it's one of them says like no fishing, and like I know, Tommy is a weird kid. Weird, it's, weird cat, it's a weird sure. kid. So the dad- and he has a Tampa Bay Rowdies pennant, which is like a Tampa Bay soccer team from the 70s. So then the dad gets more 80s blue light in his eyes. Fuck. Yeah. That guy can we'll never see again. And then we see this sign that kept saying, help me, daddy. And the sign is there and it disappears. So now uh, Emily, she's uh, with, uh, 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 what's her name? Jamie Lee. Mm-hmm. So Emily finds uh, the dad on the floor, right? And he t- she takes off his uh, uh, his bandages, and now he can s- the the uh, the George can actually see now. He can see because uh, he he can start seeing more shadows now, and not even like a second later, he's already running downtown with her. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it goes back quick when you start seeing shadows, I guess. Yes, and they're running around town, and they they uh, they talked about that they need to go. He needs to go back out there and discover what this tomb mystery is all about. Okay. Okay. So now we can see that Susie she has the necklace and the scorpion all the way from Egypt, and like you're saying, yeah, she flew with the scorpion. I guess. Somehow. Yes, I guess so. So now Tommy wants to play hide and seek with uh, uh, Jamie Lee. All right. And they start playing some hide and seek over there. Um, George is he's going over the uh, the the stuff that he found in Egypt, like all the pictures and stuff. And we have this uh, we have this guy, this this uh, professor that he's talking to. All right, uh, Wales, I believe was his name. Oh, Wales, yes, yes, yes. yes. Uh. Well, I don't know if it's Wales. It's Wyler. My bad. Wyler. Wyler, okay. Yes. Yeah, I, for, I forgot about that guy. So there's that guy, and then they meet Mercado later yes. on, right? Yeah. So Wyler is basically, they're going through the pictures together, and he notices the uh, the little eye, the same thing that's on uh, Susie's pendant, and he's basically saying that there was like this whole backstory, and I could barely even yes. tell what they were saying. He the, said... And go ahead. This is the part where I lost it in the coffee shop. And yes. the barista had to ask me if I was okay. <laughs> he says, <clears throat> and um, he said this, what comes to mind is the grand shadow, the god, I can't say the straight face, I'm sorry. Habadubada. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I'm on, sorry, man. what? It's like the god Habadubana is what he, I'm pretty sure that's yeah, what brother. he said. Habadubada. And it's just like he just, it's just like he just like this. They just told him to put a bunch of syllables together. He's just like, dum 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 Like, what? Habadubada. But anyway, so we're learning about the god Habadubada, apparently. Yeah, and he's telling them, like, you know, they, they, they're, they're the, uh, the pharaohs that worship the forces of evil. <laughs> they are. All right. So, so this is a out. theme, right? The, uh, yeah. The pharaohs and the uh, worship the forces of evil and the god Habadubina. Yeah, <laughs> Habadubina. 
So Jamie Lee now looks for the kids. Right, she's looking all over. The lights go out. And I like how the Italian films, like, every time a light bulb, like, blows it. Like, the lights just don't go out. The light bulbs always blow up, and they always do, like, a little quick shot. Oh, yeah. It's like the Rainmaker shot, where, like, they look really quick, and the, the camera focuses on their eyes. Yes. Semi-cool, but it is overdone. Um, so now she's looking for the kids upstairs, because she hears some noises coming from upstairs. And w- then she sees that there's a snake in the house. Yes. So Jamie Lee freaks out. And I guess, I thought she called the cops, but she actually ends up calling Emily. She, she No, she called security. Security? Yeah. Remember, she sees the snake. Yeah. And then she calls security, and then, like, the, secur- the security guard's all, like, yawning and bored and he like gets on the elevator oh yeah that's and then the, it traps okay in between floors or whatever. gotcha yeah. okay yeah that's the next part because we had this dude on the elevator yeah and he basically gets killed on the elevator and i was just like is this the plot to that elevator horror movie we're trying to watch maybe yeah i put in my notes security guards gets killed by habadubina <laughs> well yeah i mean he's a deadly man okay <laughs> yes don't fuck with them the he'll deadly, kill you the on the elevator evil. God I did. I did like the only part of this elevator scene I liked is when his uh, fingers were all bloody. Yeah, that was cool. And then he just like falls down. So now we have Luke, the nerd. Oh God, <laughs> with his toys, going to help Emily find Jamie Lee. All right, because she mm-hmm. can't get a hold of Jamie Lee. Emily couldn't get a hold of Jamie Lee, so she's worried about her, and she wants Luke to come with her. And I was like, "You want this fucking nerd to come?" Oh. God, I know. She's like, well, put, you know. put down your toys and come with me. I was like, could you just leave? <laughs> All right. So now uh, George is looking through more photos, kind of like um. You ever seen the uh, Red Dragon? I have. Yes. You know when he was like showing all those photos of you know where he was. That's what mm-hmm. George was doing here. Yeah. Um. Lots of stock footage photographs of uh, <laughs> Egypt. <laughs> So Jamie Lee is now talking to Emily. She's like, yeah, I was freaking out, but, you know, it happens. <laughs> okay. I, we don't even know what happened to the snake. I guess it's not there. And then now they're saying there's this door that can open. And no shit, this fucking looks like, well, I'm a magician. I can open up the door. And first Tommy's uh, like, no, you're not. I know magicians. You ain't no fucking magician. And yeah, then he I just, starts. I wanted this guy uh, to die immediately. And then he starts doing the whole abracadabra shit. And I was like, can I just turn this shit off? Fuck! Golly, this guy. I, I was begging for his eyeball to be plucked out. Yeah, I okay. just wanted him to die. So, like, and he... Oh, God. So, he opens up the door, right? Yeah. And he vanishes, and he screams. Okay? And then Jamie Lee comes and sees what's going on. Emily didn't even give a fuck. And then we can see that this fucking dude... Or, like, the room is doing his Egypt thing again... And basically what happens is Tom, uh, Luke or whatever ends up in Egypt dead. So sure. so With now more budget we would have probably got more of that story. Exactly. We probably would have saw him go through time and space or whatever and some some yeah, Eddie's effect. But now this guy just ended up in Egypt just dead and I was like, fuck this is it. Can we just get this guy like his eye poked out or something? Come on, something yeah. here. So Emily basically just thinks that Luke is joking around. It's one of those things like, oh, he's just joking. That that is returned back to the retro blood reviews. Oh, he, it's all just a joke. Yes, it's okay. a joke. It's never a joke. So that's all happening. And I got all Tommy's like, "Hey, uh, can we get some food over here?" <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now um, Emily, she's going to look uh, in the uh, the sand room. All right, that's Tommy's room. Okay. And then Emily, she basically wants to call the cops. She's like, hey, there's some weird shit going on. And then, like, you know, George is basically saying, like, hey, you know, the fucking guy, Luke, he's known for joking around. So let's not jump to conclusions. He could just be joking around. All right. Mm. So I wrote in my notes, the kids have some 80s horror dreams. They're not really that horror. And we can see that... uh, we can see that uh, one of the hands like burns the sheets. Yeah, that was cool. All right. And then Emily, she checks to see if uh, Luke's at work. She goes back into the car with George and they start driving around the town. She said that Luke never showed up to work. And then George says, ah, he's an idiot. 
And she's like, well, you never liked him in the beginning. And I was like, okay, is there like a story here we don't know? What's going on here? And then they said that the kids are in the park with Jamie Lee. Mm-hmm. So we see the kids in the park with Jamie Lee. And they start taking a photo. And they take yes. the photo. And the photo doesn't come out. Like it doesn't develop. Because one of those, right. you know, this is the 80s, brother. It's like a, it's the 1980s Polaroid film. Yeah. Which I guess was like super high technology in 1982. Yeah. But like, <laughs> I thought it was funny because they're like trying to get it to develop. And then Susie's like, oh, it's a dud. It's defective or whatever. And then they just throw it on the ground and walk away. Yeah. And then it develops. Like, only, then it in, develops but only in the necklace. Only the necklace developed on the film. The and deadly. Some lady comes along and picks it up. Yeah. Did you get her name? I didn't get her. I just nope. called her old creepy lady. She was just old creepy lady. I don't, I don't know who, where she came from other than to tell us about Marcato. That was her whole yes. purpose. So she this, goes so. to Marcato and gives, uh, or, or, or like, I, okay, no, no. The way, she, so we see Emily show up and she's yes. just walking around and then we hear this old lady, Emily, you need to see this. It's about your children. Does she call her name? I believe she did. Because <clears throat> she's like walking around. She says she's walking around 10th Street and this lady's standing on a balcony above Mercado's shop. Yeah, and then and then uh, she throws she a says it, She's got to have this. It's about the, it's about your children, and she just throws this envelope over the balcony, and then Emily picks it up. Yeah, and by the way, like this film had the most close up of eyes for no reason that I've ever seen. Well, that's an Italian thing. It's in a lot of Italian movies. So now we see the junk. I called it a junk room, but apparently it was antiques. It's an antiques shop. Yeah, I'll say a bunch of junk to me. And this is when, uh, what's his name? Martos? Marcato. Marcato, rather. Marcato. Mm. He gets a call, and, he's, and she, he gets a call from that creepy old lady saying, I have it, and you want to you see this. Mm-hmm. And then he brings out a book, and the book is Eye of Evil. Nice. Yeah, so, Eye of Evil. On the Eye of Evil. Okay. And uh, Emma, now Emily's rocking around, and this is when she gets called on by the old freaky, the old lady, <laughs> freaky, the old creepy lady. <laughs> she might be freaky. We don't know. This is uh, this is for your this is for you. This concerns your children. She throws her the photo. She looks at it, and then she just walks away and doesn't ask any kind of questions. No. And then, like you were saying, she- yeah, he was buying the antique store from Marquedu. So Emily shows George the photo. All right, and the name on the photo was the the Marcato guy, and she gives the uh, the the photo to uh, to uh, um, what's his name, Wheeler. All right, mm-hmm. and I think Wheeler kind of like fucked. Up. I think the dubbing fucked up George's name because I swear Wheeler was like, okay, Robert. No, he was like, okay, um, <laughs> yeah, okay, Robert, and then it was George. No, I think he called George John. That's what it was. Like, it was just very like, weird. All right, and then uh, George is asking, well, what the lady looked like? And she, and the, and was like, well, she was strange. And she says, but I felt like she had a connection to my children. I was like, what is going on here? What? <laughs> wow. And then now, then apparently em- Emily, during this whole time, she did a report on the sand. And it looks like the sand came from the silk of Egypt. I know that's really weird, right? Like it looks like the silk of Egypt. And then, have, and then they have more eyes close up. We gotta do that, Alice. We gotta do video and just have our eyes looking around, like an Creepy. entire episode of just our eyes. Yes, fucking crazy shit. So now uh, Tommy starts screaming, and they go to him. And toys are over the ste- toys are all over the step for some reason. So they look at it confused with some uh, uh, some some uh, great '80s music playing in the background, and so now we're back in uh, uh, Tommy's room, okay, and so now Emily is Emily and George both check on the kids, okay. And they're asking, like, Tommy, like, yo, what's going on with the toys over here? All right. 
And where is Jamie Lee? And the kids don't know. The kids say Jamie Lee hasn't returned from her voyage yet. Yeah. So she essentially just disappears and then we don't really see her alive again ever. So they're all like, they're all like, okay. So like, they're like, what's going on with this voyage and stuff? So Tommy eventually says like, so I, I don't know. I guess they just cut it and then they all sleep. And then t- Tommy is now asking uh, Susie, uh, basically like, hey, what's going on? And she, he's like, it wasn't my fault. All right, I wasn't. It, was, it wasn't my fault that uh, Jamie Lee is gone now. Poor Jamie Lee. Poor Jamie Lee. Poor Jamie Lee. She's so, gone on a voyage. So, Wiles has the uh, the photo. He's looking at it all creepy in his office and stuff, all at nighttime and stuff. You know, by himself, that nothing ever can happen. He hears some creepy music. All right, from our great uh, uh, musician there, Frizzy. Mm-hmm. We have a first-person view, and it's a snake. And then eventually, the snake attacks uh, Wiles. He screams while Susie screams at the same time, and Wiles is dead by poison. He's fucking there. He is. He's gone. And then the photo disappears, and Susie freaks out. And then George and Emily come back in there, and they tell her to relax. And she has the photo of that necklace in her hand and it's like burnt for some reason. Mm, yes. For some reason. And then we have George and Emily. They're confused of why she has a photo. And Tommy says, well, she, uh, we, we, we played this game and she was on her voyage. I picked up some stuff from my voyage as well too. And George's like, oh yes, tell me about this game. Like the most calmest voice ever. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, what, uh, what, what, what's the rules of this game? What do you do? It's like, well, I don't really know sure how I do it, but I go on voyages and I, I go to different lands and, and areas and I pick up stuff. Like here, look at this. Look at this statue. Look at this like piece of statue I picked up. From the river. And then like, I'm pretty sure this is your boy. Yeah, from the river and stuff. It was like your boy. I'm in this statue. How did Anubis, you get this? Yeah. I've been in this statue. How did he get this thing? And then uh, Tommy just thinks they're yelling at him. Yeah, yeah. The funniest part was George is like, are you lying? And then Tommy's like, ah, oh, fuck. I knew you guys were going to do this. I'm just going to go to sleep now. <laughs> yes. So they go to the, uh, uh, what's his name? Mortis? Marcato. Marcato. I can't remember his fucking name. So they go to you Marcato's house. Names. Well, bro, I'm just, I was I, I couldn't believe I was even on this point of the movie. I was so bored. So we're at Marcato's house, okay? And he, no shit. They walk in, he's like, I knew you'd come. <laughs> just like Matt Hardy. I knew you'd come. <laughs> so why, <laughs> have you noticed go that, ahead. um, have you noticed that um, every time we go in these Italian movies, especially yeah. every time they go to a university or an antique shop or whatever to find the uh, expert on their situation, he's always like the weirdest motherfucker you've ever seen. Yes. And this doesn't change this time. Marcato's this weird motherfucker for something that's being weird. Yeah. But he knows a lot about whatever this is. Yeah. He knows everything. He knows everything, but he doesn't tell that. us anything. Yeah. All right. So during all this stuff, uh, Susie, she's creepily putting her necklace into the drawer for the scorpion. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now he's asking, uh, what do you know about the, uh, uh, okay, so he's asking, what, what do you know about the, uh, you know, the, the pharaohs and stuff? Uh, he said, basically, he was saying that this necklace that they got, okay, it symbolizes a thousand year symbol of evil. Yes. All right, and she's saying that yeah, she has absorbed the this the the presence of evil in this gym. So basically, when somebody gets this necklace, they mm-hmm. get absorbed with this pharaoh demon into them, and it makes them change. Even though I haven't really seen Emily do anything bad at all, but she changed. Right. So now your daughter's in great danger. Then we have a lot of eyes closed up. That's in my notes. George thinks he's is he's, he's BSing. 
All right. And now, like, uh, uh, now he's all mad. Martos is all mad. Make sure your day, your daughter's doesn't have the gem on her. All right. Mm. So now they go back to the daughter's room and they look through her room, and they see the necklace and a scorpion. And Emily wants to, uh, you know, basically get the cops involved. And George is like, "No, we can't do that." Uh, the phone rings. He gets it. They now found out that the uh, from the university that Whaler has died by snake death. He did. <laughs> Sad. And then now, now they want to go. Now they don't really have any options now because the only person who knows what's basically going on is this Marketo guy. And they they end up calling him. Okay, so now Susie, she's all like sick and everything because she has all this 80s glow around her and stuff and she has mm-hmm. like the scorpion in her hand and everything and she's she's basically in like a trance right now she's her body's being taken over okay yes she's and, kind of possessed yes so so now the uh, the doctor or the uh, uh, martos he wants to see her alone okay like they see and then he they leave the room they start talking about this guy might be a fake or a fraud and everything they hear some screaming. They come up back up there, and this Martos guy is like rolling around the floor, all bloodied with his ear and shit, all fucked up. There, then they get him. Was like, yes, like you know, I'm, I, I have to do some more time, but I think I can help out your daughter if I have yeah, some more I was time. Little, right I, was, there. I was, I was also a little confused by this because, like, she, so she's like kind of in a coma or whatever. Yes. And then Mercado's like writhing around on the floor and he's like foaming at the mouth and blood's running out of his ears. And then you can hear like screaming, but it's like her voice screaming instead of his voice. But in the very next scene, he's fucking fine. Well, yeah, you know what I mean? He's uh, He is a master of traits when it comes to that. Okay. I guess so. But when did- um, is this is after they call it, he calls somebody, right? Doesn't he? Because remember, there's a scene where he picks up the phone. He's like, yeah, he's like, we're gonna have to get together because this thing's coming back or something like that. But then they never follow that plot line at all. Bro, they don't follow a lot of plot lines. Okay, and that's true. They're just, they're just, I guess it was lost there. in the budget. So he says his daughter is a prisoner of the stone. Okay, and mm-hmm. there's evil powers flooding yeah. her mind. All right, so Emily, you know, thinks Susie is dying stuff, and she's like, you know, what can I do? Okay, and then uh, Martis. It's like, okay, well, let me try something. I was like, didn't you already just try something? <laughs> yep, and that didn't work either. So Susie's cold and stuff. Um, then they have the... They basically bring her to the hospital room now. Okay? The parents mm-hmm. are waiting in the hospital room. They got um, all these tests on Susie's head going on right now. Uh, Emily tells uh, George uh, to go with the house with Tommy because she feels like he would be better there. Okay. I don't know why you can bring him or with you. Okay. Now there we have Martos walks uh, around his uh, uh, antique store. Okay. Uh, Tommy is now telling. Uh, he's now saying he needs to be punished. Punish him. Okay. For some reason. Yeah. For some <laughs> reason. Yeah. Uh, but then we have Martos looking at the stone <laughs> and the blue light. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Tommy's still saying punish me for some reason he sees some blood on the wall there's like this super bright blood on the wall yeah it's like coming through the wall like it's like uh, like it's soaking into the wall yes then we have Dr. Forrester looks at Susie's x-ray x-rays and she they see a snake in her body a cobra yeah it's badass how's that work oh <laughs> uh, you know it's the forces of Habadubina so now she starts flatlining, right? And then, she, yeah. and then like, then she like pops out. And then like, we have lots of eighties like blue light going on everywhere. Mm, yep. All right. Then we have more eyes cl- being closed. You know, like close up on the eyes. Mm-hmm. And then we can see that Jamie Lee's dead in the wall. Yeah, that, she's that, a corpse. That, that's where she went, brother. Looks like her Although voyage. We never see any of that. Yeah, we never see anything. The voyage just stopped inside the wall, apparently. Yeah. So Emily's up now. She's Emily. So I don't know. At this time, it's it's like it's like she thinks Susan is dead, but Emily's not like not, not upset at all. Like she doesn't really have like an upset looking face. Without that, was weird. Mm-hmm. And then we have um, 
uh, what's his name? Um, then we have uh, Marketo. He holds up the, the pendulant to some 80s blue light. <clears throat> that he's casting a spell. Yes. Susan's freaking Not out. Much. All right, she wakes up. She's all freaking out a little bit. And then we have some more of our Marcos, you know, blue light all over him and shit. And then eventually the daughter's fine. They meet Marcos. He says, yeah, your daughter's fine and stuff. You know, she's, no harm will come to her. Don't worry about it. I transferred that demon into me now. All yeah, right? like any exorcist. And he's all like, you wouldn't understand. And I was like, you know what? I don't understand. I don't understand. Yeah. And he's like, your daughter's okay. You were right. I was like, you're right. We all don't, we all don't understand. All right, and then he's like, "You need to throw this necklace into the deepest, darkest waters you can find." In the river. In the river. So Emily says she will be okay. All right, and she goes out there and she throws. Oh uh, well, hold on, we didn't get there yet. So now no, we're back. Yes, we're almost there. So now we have this whole scene with um, Marcato fighting mm-hmm. off deadly. Uh, 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 birds that he uh, uh, taxidermied. Yeah, yeah. So that's like a theme in this movie is like he taxidermies birds and then they all decide to attack him. Yes. So they all attacking him. They taxidermies his yeah. ass and they eat mm-hmm. him and stuff. They take his soul and everything. Yep. You can't take my mortal soul, but they did anyway because they killed his ass. And we didn't have one eye, one bird taken out of his eye. No. It's a lost opportunity fucking piss me off and then we get back we can see that all the taxidermy birds were just fine new york's clean during the daytime yeah then we have george he takes the necklace and he throws it off the bridge and i like how the deepest darkest waters are just run off the manhattan bridge that's the deepest darkest yeah. waters they can find oh well, yeah all right and then he tells we him to throw it in the river and he does then we see a sunset in egypt and then we see that evil witch lady give another white girl the powers of Montoot, or whatever his name was. Habadubada. Uh, Habadubada. Yeah. Another, she gives him, she's given the same ambulance to another girl. Apparently only uh, young white women, or young white girls, uh, they only want to give that penlet to them. Yeah, because so they can take it back to wherever they come from. Yes. And, and spread the evil that way. Yeah. So, uh, so this means we're going to get a sequel, right? Because uh, the pendant's not destroyed. Hell no. They ain't fucking are you kidding me. I ain't made no fucking sequel this shit. No year. sequel. No sequel. This thing this. is left and buried. One, though. We can make a sequel to I this. I wouldn't even know what to do for a sequel for this shit. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Golly. But yeah, that's that's the uh, Manhattan baby, everybody. Yeah. Let it be buried. Let it be buried. It was not uh, not fantastic. Like I think it could, I you know I don't know how you could have married. I guess you could have like done some more special effects and more story or whatever. I just, I just thought it was boring. I, yeah. I think with the budget, a better budget, it could have been better. Like if it shown like, well, it also reminded me a little bit of phantasm in a way. And like, if they like how in phantasm, it shows them going to like the other d- dimension where the little guys come from mm-hmm. and the tall man. Like, if they had kind of done something like that where it showed, like, Tommy going to, like, Egypt and finding the Anubis statue and bringing it back instead of them just saying, oh, he went on a voyage and now he's back. Yeah, it's, like, really lazy. But, you know. It could have been a lot better. But, yeah. but I mean, you know, Fulci hated this, too, so. Whatever. Exactly. So, it is what it is. So, but everybody, we'll, we'll do some more Fulci movies here and there. But this one was definitely not... Um, on his uh, his good side, it was a very low point. Even he will admit that as well, too. Yeah, so. for sure. But everybody, join us here next week on the Retro Blood as we continue this New York style month. Mm-hmm. And let's see, which one should we do? We actually came up with the last three movies we're going to be doing. Um, the last two movies, yeah. We should yeah. do the Clairvoyant next week. Let's do the clairvoyant. I've never seen this. I've Neither. heard of this movie, but I've never seen it. Exactly. Should be pretty wild, man. Mm-hmm. The clairvoyant. All right. Join us here on the Retro Blood because we'll be talking all about that. And we'll be um, 
Then we'll actually after that episode next week. We're gonna, after we do the uh, the final review, we're going to be getting to our October schedule, which is going to be pretty crazy. So yeah, it's going to be crazy. But everybody, grab your Egypt pendant, get some '80s blue lie in you, a blue light in you. Mm-hmm. Go there, go to voyages that nobody can see, and hopefully you won't end up dead in a wall. Hopefully. All right. So be careful. J.S. Allison, James Klein, we will see you all later on the Retro Blood. See you guys. <laughs>